Hey guys, welcome to Badass Wednesdays, where today we're going to be talking about Hugh Glass, which you may have heard of him on the movie The Revenant or the book The Revenant. In case you're new to this channel, every single Wednesday I do this thing called Badass Wednesdays. That's where I talk about someone that is just complete badass in my opinion. So if you guys are interested in this stuff, continue watching this and please just think about hitting that subscribe button and that little bell right next to the, the button that you're going to press in order to subscribe to this channel. You may have watched The Revenant, stars Leonardo DiCaprio. If not, then after this video, you may want to go watch it. It's on Netflix, or if you're some weirdo and you still watch DVDs, go watch it on whatever you watch DVDs on. So there are some weird inaccuracies in the movie, obviously, because it's Hollywood and nobody really knows exactly what happened to Hugo Glass and exactly what he did, but for the most part, we do. And you can also go discover him in a museum of mountain men. So, let's get to the video. Glass, being born in 1783 in Pennsylvania. He was said to have been of Irish descent. He grew up to be an explorer. It's said that during these explorations, he ended up getting caught by Lafayette and forced to become a pirate. If he didn't choose to be a pirate, then it was death. So, that kind of narrows down his choices. He was very obvious that he didn't want to do this. So him and one other person, they ended up leaving. And they swam in the river to go to a land that was pretty known for having a cannibalistic tribe. When they got to this island, um, announced to them, they needed a sacrifice. So it was Hugo's friend that ended up getting beaten with pine needles and murdered. When they took Hugo in, then he got lucky and he had something for them that they wanted. So they accepted him into their family. He had got married to a Native American woman, so the story goes. And well, he didn't stick around for very long. When Glass ended up leaving the Pawnee tribe that he was accepted into, him, William Ashley, Andrew Henry, and a hundred other men, they were all fur trappers. So they end up going up the Missouri River to end up looking for some of this fur. After Ashley's second expedition, he had left St. Louis. He left Hugh Glass and John Fitzgerald as a part of the crew to watch their boats. Henry ended up sending Jedediah Smith with a message for William Ashley to bring horses and supplies for them. Right after this, there was a battle. 15 of Ashley's men were killed at the Akrika village where they were at from a tribe that was generally known to be peaceful and this ended up being the first actual tribe that attacked the Americans while they were on the west side of the US. Hugh Glass, he ended up getting shot in the leg and injured, soon being able to leave the scene with the rest of the men that survived. Glass ended up actually writing a letter for a man named Gardner and his family because Gardner had actually died so Glass took the time to actually write this letter informing his parents that he had passed away during this battle. Shortly after this battle, William Ashley sends Smith to actually go back up river and get Andrew Henry and his men. After hearing from Jedediah Smith, Henry comes down from the river and he was told to join Ashley to bring all of his men across the river to safety to him so that way they could bring them back up. Now on August 16th, 1823, Andrew had led a group of about 30 people, including Henry's men, which includes Hugh Glass, up to the Grand River. And they were on their way to go to Fort Henry at Yellowstone River. This is when they were attacked once again by another Native American tribe. Now let's go a few days ahead and Hugh, this is when, in the movie The Revenant, the iconic scene that nobody could really bear to watch, he was mauled by a bear, leaving his throat slit and wounds on his back so bad you could see his ribs and there being no skin or meat at all and just gashes all over his body. He was thought to be dead, but announced to the men he was still alive. It is said that they carried him and they put him on a litter 
and brought him to safety until they got attacked once again. Nobody really 100% knows, but there's a few different stories to what happens here. Either they just up and left Glass, saying, screw you, you're, you're holding us down, and they took all of his supplies, or they got attacked by a Native American tribe again still taking his supplies, leaving him, and the Native Americans really not having anything to do with him because they also thought he was dead. So the only thing that Glass was left with in either one of these stories was a bear pelt. He had traveled crawling through the woods just and getting to a river to where he was finally able to wash his wounds. His wounds still had rotten flesh in it after this being about a week after being mauled by a bear. So there was rotten flesh, he tried to wash out, there was nothing happening. So there's a few different stories on this as well. It's that he had found a log with maggots and just stuck the maggots in there and just let the maggots eat on the rotten flesh. So that way he wouldn't get gangrene or any other infections. Further down the road, he said, hey, I cannot keep crawling like this, his knees hurting, his wounds still being open and infected and just disgusting. So he finally splinted off his leg properly and was able to walk. So he was trying to make it to a fort to get his revenge on these men that left him. It is also said that while he was at one of these rivers, he either got a boat from a Native American tribe or he actually ended up building a boat himself for him to be able to travel faster instead of just walking or crawling. So he finally got to Fort Henry. He was able to purchase a rifle, some powder, and shot and some other supplies as well hoping that he'd be able to find Fitzgerald and the men that had left him behind but he had woken up early and continued his quest early on that day he had found a bison being eaten by wolves he hid let the wolves finish what they wanted and he was able to actually eat some of this raw flesh off this bison when he showed up to Tilton he actually met up with Bridger Bridger being a teenager he also kind of like, he really didn't know what was going on. He really thought Glass was dead. So Glass sparing his life, and he had known that his real enemy was Fitzgerald. He continued on his revenge path for Fitzgerald until later on, he did actually end up discovering where his whereabouts were located. In about 1824, he actually ended up locating Fitzgerald. And when he showed up to Fort Atkinson, where he had located him. He, he wanted to kill him right then and there, but knowing that if he killed someone in the military, that would be... So Glass wanted to actually deal with Fitzgerald right then and there, but him being in the military, his men would not allow that. So after the captain on duty had actually listened to Glass's story, they had grabbed Glass's gun and returned it back to him. He had a long talk with Glass and had basically convinced him that it wasn't worth it. Later on, Glass, he died. Um, he went out and he was caught by some Native American tribe and murdered. So after all of these close calls with death, it finally caught up to him. And Glass, he went down as one of the most badass men in history. Hey guys, thank you for watching another week of Badass Wednesdays. And I would just like to remind you guys to hit that subscribe button down at the bottom as well as that little bell icon. Once you click that, boom, it should pop right up. So also, don't forget to like and comment. And please, please, please feel free to share this video. If you like this, tune in next week for another video. So thank you guys. And as always, please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I hope you guys have a good night.